Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today is Saturday, so therefore I have a book review for you guys, and I'm trying to keep these book reviews going because I have so many phenomenal books that I've read and want to review for you guys on camera. So this book is going to be another Christian nonfiction. I've been reviewing them back to back. I'm sorry about that. I have my biblical fiction books coming for you guys soon. But um, this one is one that I really, really love and I highly would recommend. I think if you're a fan of Fervent, you would love this book. And um, this book is A Woman's Guide to Spiritual Warfare by Quinn Scherer and Ruth Ann Garlic. Let me just move over. But here is the book. It is a really, really pretty. First of all, I love the colors. Um, the purple, the pink, and the blue. Yes, I'm here for it. I love the two swords. Up, I mean, sorry, the two swords. I love the sword. I love the crown. And, um, yeah, it's How to Protect Your Home, Family, and Friends from Spiritual Darkness. This is the revised and updated edition because there is an older version, but this one is updated. So, what I'm going to do is um, read the review that I wrote on Goodreads before I get into talking because I can ramble on about these books. We have seen this in the, the last few videos. So, I figured reading my review will keep me a little focused on the points that I wanted to touch. Um, so yeah, I give this five stars. Love this book so much. It's up there with Fervent. Um, this and Fervent together are like my prayer duo books. So amazing. But I'm just going to read my book, um, review. So I said, such a powerful book that really gets you focused in understanding spiritual warfare. This book is not for the faint of heart. It is for those that want to take their prayer lives to the next level. If you are seeking a more, I'm sorry, if you are seeking a deeper or more intimate prayer life, if you desire to be an intercessor, this book is for you. 13 chapters jammed with extraordinary prayers and insight on various topics of prayer. I loved how much my spirit was fed by reading this. I can't pinpoint one chapter that made me happy over another. The entire read kept me focused on God and prayer. I found myself writing down the prayers, jotting down scriptures, annotating, highlighting, and really diving into my own Bible as I read this. This is a highly effective book for your personal prayer arsenal. Highly recommend. And, um... I agree with what I said back then. This book is amazing. I read this book back in December of 2018, and um, it really just pushed me further into wanting to do intercessory prayer. So this says, there is a spiritual war going on, and God has given women a key position on the battlefront. Women everywhere face challenges that threaten to overwhelm them and those they love. A child's destructive choices, a friend's broken marriage, a husband's infidelity, a bad medical report, depression, fear, anxiety. But don't watch hopelessly from the sidelines. Take a stand against the evil that endangers you and your loved ones and fight back. In this newly revised and updated edition, you'll discover sound biblical guidelines, inspiring stories, and practical steps to help you see victory in every situation. As you understand your authority in the risen Christ, you will learn how to overcome the enemy's attacks, help loved ones break cycles of bondages and bad choices, and make your home a place of refuge from spiritual attack. These are crucial times for praying women to take their place in the battle here is the go-to field guide for every wife mother sister daughter and friend ready to step out in confidence and fight for all she holds dear so like i said this book is broken into 13 chapters my mom did buy this for me she bought this for me back in february of 2018 i didn't read it to december yeah but um as you can see there's a lot of tabs i've highlighted the, the tab the mess out of this um, the pink tabs are the notes that I took that were, like, really profound because I actually did, like, highlight in this entire book, if you guys can see. But what I've been doing with the tabs is sometimes there are some notes that just don't stick out as much that I don't need to tab, but the ones with tabs are the, th the ones that I really want to remember. The purple tabs are all the prayers throughout this book, this, um book that I really really loved so this book is broken down like I said into 13 chapters I'm trying to get the table of contents so I can't even really go through the chapters because they're so long so I'm just gonna pick a few of my favorites I guess here's just a page of like how I annotated in here because I was really going in depth with this but um this one is chapter one it says but I never want it to be in a battle and it basically just tells us of uh, what we're battling with not flesh and blood but of uh, um the powers of darkness, the authorities, and all that. And it's just letting you know that even though we don't want to be in that battle, we don't want to be in spiritual warfare, no matter whether we want to or not. We are in spiritual warfare because we have an enemy, especially if you believe in Christ, you have an enemy. Um, you know that you have an enemy, and he is after you regardless if you want to be after or not. Um, and it's just saying that we just need to, you know, suck it up, deal with it, and learn to fight correctly because a lot of us don't fight correctly. I know for me, I never really 
knew that it was a correct way to fight, especially when dealing with spirits. Um, people try to handle things in the fleshly sense, but it is so much more than the flesh. Everything that happens in the flesh realm, in the flesh realm, <laughs> in the carnal, is a resemblance of something going on in the spiritual realm, um, which I've learned over the time that I've been studying the Word of God. And it, it's just really, really profound. I really love the way this dives in to um, just prayer as a whole. There are like prayers that other people have prayed that they put in the Bible that I've like in the Bible in the book that I've highlighted in purple and wrote notes about um, some of these. A lot of these prayers I have taken actually for myself and written them out to suit me. Like this one here, the, the lady was praying for her father um, and... It says, thank you, Father, that it is your desire to bring Sue's dad into your kingdom. We take authority in the name of Jesus and bind the deceiving spirits that align to him. We seek, I'm sorry, we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth that you love him. Because cause him to come to his senses and escape from the trap of the devil. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And next to it, I said, need to pray this over my father. Um, because I felt like that was something that I really wanted to pray over my father. So there are a lot of prayers in here that you will find that you can pray over yourself. But a lot more of these are prayers that you can pray over individuals in your life. Be it your parents, your, your children, your siblings, your cousins, um, your long distant relatives, friends that you know, students. You know, if you're a teacher, these are prayers that you can pray. I remember there was a prayer in here where this guy was praying before he left his house. Because his house got got robbed, and he started to pray over. I um, mean, not the not the the husband, but the wife began to pray over um, her house. I'm trying to find it, but um, they talk about different strategies of binding and loosing, the importance of a strategy when praying. It really just goes deep into that. Um, I'm really just trying to find that prayer, so bear with me because I have too many purple tabs everywhere. There's uh, prayers for taking back your nation. You know, there are prayers. I don't know why I marked it. Oh, there's one from Isaiah 62, 6 and 7 that they wrote the scripture out. But I marked it as a prayer because I felt like that was something you could pray. Here it is. Okay, so um, after they had got robbed, they learned, they began to pray. And they basically were saying, Lord, please station your angels to guard and protect our belongings. Um, and it's basically asking God to give security and provide protection over their home while they're gone so their house is not broken in, caught on fire, or anything like that. And a lot of the times we don't think to pray for our house. Um, we pray for the atmosphere in the house to be, you know, conducive to the Holy Spirit, but we never really pray for the building itself to be protected by the Holy Spirit, to be protected by God's angels from any hurt or harm. We always pray um I guess in the moment, oh, you know, I pray, you know, we'll, we'll say like, I pray my house never burns down, or I pray I never get robbed, but are you actually praying that prayer, which this book really opened my eyes to doing that. I haven't honestly been doing that myself, but now that I'm remembering about this, I need to actually write this script, this prayer out and stick it on the wall so that I can pray this before I walk out of the house because I don't want anything to happen to this house or any other houses or any of my future houses when I get them. So, um... I'm sorry if my voice is a little raspy. I apologize. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, you know. This book is jam literally is jam-packed with, like, lots of prayers. And pretty much what I have been doing with this is I have been using this um, with my Pray the Scriptures Bible. And I've been taking the prayers out of here, writing them in a more personalized way, whether I'm praying them over myself, praying them over a relative or a friend. And then I'm sticking them in the bibles with their perspective respective prayers and i'm gonna do a whole video on my pray the scriptures bible and how i use this with that because i think it's essential i think i have an igtv video clip where i discussed this i'm not 100 sure but i think i did do that and if i do i'll leave a link down below to that video um but yeah so in the back of the book once you finish the um last chapter you get these appendixes so the first appendix is an arsenal for um scriptures on spiritual warfare so this is like for authority over the enemy for your children for dealing with abusive husband um for guidance for healing for provision and finances for weariness and depression on why we pray to receive jesus as lord for when um you have sleepiness for those in authority for wayward family members like there are literally just a bunch of scriptures that you can personally go to and read for yourself and study appendix two i marked it with a flag 
because this is something that I really wanted to be able to get to immediately. And these are prayers and declarations based on scripture. So you have ones against counterattacks, um, authority over the enemy for children, a hedge of protection, guidance, help in a hurry, opposing satanic harassment, which I think is one not many people think about. We are exposed to demonic activity every day. And in a sense, we're also exposed to satanic harassment every day. Some people are more aware of it than others. Some people can um, battle that better than others. But this book made me highly aware that I, it was something I needed to pray for. Um, you have prayers for breaking curses, for declaration of victory, for day-to-day -day family life, a family with division, for favor, for finances, for financial lack. Um, for when you're doing elections, for marriages, for false religions, for nations, for praise. I mean, it, it just promises salvation, times of trouble, terrorism, youth. And then you have a suggested prayer strategy. And, um, you know, she says when I pray for them, I she, basically when she's praying for certain things, she prays for things in specific order. So, like, she prays for God's presence, his protection, his provision, his peace, and his precious promise fulfilled. And then she'll pray for specific things um, within a person's life, such as discernment and wisdom for them to make wise choices financially and morally. Um, Quinshira and Ruth Ann Garlic really just give a lot of um, good points on prayer, on how we can stay focused and really be equipped for spiritual warfare. Fervent is a book that just talks about prayer in general um, and being in tune with your prayer and praying and making it a consistent thing. This book is more so about targeted, precise prayers. I'm not saying that Fervent isn't strategic because obviously it's strategic prayers, but this one takes it a little bit for it's, it's basically Fervent times two because it goes a little bit further and a little bit deeper than Fervent does and at first, I didn't want to get this because I thought it was too too similar to Fervent, in my opinion, originally. But I had a subscriber tell me that the content in this book was completely different from Fervent. So my mom had got it, and then she ended up getting me a copy, and um, I loved it so much. I definitely plan to reread this. Probably every year, I will reread this. I haven't read it so far this year. I'll probably start up um, in December reading this in fervent just to prepare my mind for the next year which is 2020 so um do i recommend this yes i highly recommend this i will leave links down below to christianbook.com as well as amazon and um any other links for like itunes and kobo and barnes and nobles and things like that if you're interested in purchasing this this book is amazing it will get you focused it helped me a lot when I wanted to get more into my prayers. This is great for prayer journaling. You can read a chapter, you can um, read a page per day or however you wanna do it and journal what you get out of this. I have gone with it, ran, highlighted, marked it up. You know, I, I made this personal for me and I wrote questions and I wrote my thoughts out. And, um, you know, I just, I think it's an amazing book. I highly recommend it. If you want to get this, I definitely do recommend that you get it. Especially if you're a fan of Fervent, you will definitely love this book. Now, if you're not ready to touch on spiritual warfare and be, um, intense about it, I would still say get it. <laughs> I know most people would say don't get it, but no, get it. You might not want to read it right away, um, but I still would say get it and have it in your library because it's one book that I think is really useful and helpful and it really just helps you to focus on prayer and shows you different ways in which you can pray that you may not have thought of. So um, though that's, a, that's my thoughts basically on this book. I highly recommend it. I love this book. It's amazing. I love it so much and um, I hope you guys check it out. But thank you guys for watching this video, rating, commenting, subscribing and all that great stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!